one, two, three. My name is Jonathan Stitch. I've killed a man. I've tortured a man. And I've even written a book about it. But this is not my story. This is the story of J.J. Curtis. James Jeremiah Curtis was born sometime between, say, 1935 and 1940. Allegedly an only child, it is said that he was orphaned. And who knows, perhaps he was. His early life is no doubt grim and austere. National service brings hard work and his first intoxicating taste of public performance. Demobbed in 59, he begins an apprenticeship, but finds himself drawn back to the stage. His early years in the theatre and in television are nothing but struggle and anonymity. The 1960s bring social turmoil and personal liberation to the Western world, but for J.J. Curtis, fame seems as far away as ever, and he retreats to the hinterland of Music Hall. In 1973, as Britain grinds to a halt, he is rescued from obscurity by impresario Monty Franklin. A tragic accident on the opening night leaves J.J. as star of the show and hit sensation of the year in London's West End. Returning now in triumph to television, J.J. dabbles in sitcom and serious documentary before, at last, at the dawning of a new era, he creates a game show. And he calls it The Big Prize. A potent mixture of family values and rampant materialism, the show is condemned by critics, ignored by fashion, and watched, of course, by millions. So the critics move on and fashions change, but JJ is unflinching, grinding on to become, through sheer bloody persistence, a part of the fabric of England. His voice, the background bonhomie to our daily tribulations for over 20 years. He is living proof that if you declare yourself a treasured institution for long enough, then eventually that is what you will be. And now he is immune to the sneers of his detractors because the people, his people, have adopted him. He is our favorite uncle. Brilliant, good entertainer. Well, he's got a lot of, a lot of charisma, hasn't he? Oh, a very talented man. He's in a part of British history, isn't he? I think the show is uh, brilliant. Now, which of the following is the capital city of Canada? Is it A, Ottawa, B, Vancouver, or C, Toronto? It's A! So there he is, J.J. Curtis. Still popular, but not like the old days, or so I'm told. I have ears. I hear the talk. Ratings sliding away. J.J. washed up. The great man ain't got that magic no more. That's what I hear. Well, it ain't so. <laughs> is A, the rumba? B, the conga? Or C, the tango? <laughs> There will be no more talk. Instead, we will concentrate. We will improve. We will make my show even better. First up, the studio audience. Look at them. They're living bloody dead. Next, the Bennett family from Swindon. Anally retentive, prissy, middle-class wankers. I don't want their kind on my show again, OK? Now, the Arkwrights. They were good. Very good. Humble. Sincere. I like them. The public will like them. I have decided that the Arkwright family from Barnsley will win the big prize. Do we understand? We'll be back next week. Good night and God bless. Anyway, his decline is not merely professional. It is a matter of record that a much nastier shock awaits him one fresh morning as we join him at a private medical clinic on Harley Street. Where else? Mr. Curtis. 
call me JJ. Uh, Jay, Jay. I had hoped to be delivering good news. That the loss of weight and the pain from which you've been suffering would have some benign cause. Unfortunately, that's not the case. Well, don't spare me. I'm no stranger to breaking bad news myself. Only last week we had a family. They've been hoping to appear on the show for years. Keen as mustard. But you know what? They just didn't have it. Star quality. I had to tell them. Imagine. I think this is a more serious matter. I'm very sorry to have to tell you, but it's cancer. Denial. It's a perfectly normal reaction. Just as I deny that I could ever end up working for a man like J.J. Curtis. I mean, it's impossible. Unthinkable. <laughs> He's a game show host. I am a novelist. And the winner of this year's McKinley Prize for the best debut novel goes to Jonathan Stitch. I've never met Curtis. Never even seen his show. So how could I have known he'd be watching me that night? Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Some people will ask, what is the point of an award for a novel at a time when the written word is in decline? And how could I have guessed what effect my speech would have on a man in his condition? Well, to them, I would say there is no better time than now. Because although we are just flesh and blood, oh. our literature lasts forever. Though we are destined to perish, to be washed away, to be forgotten. It is in the written word that we open the door to immortality. <gasps> Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Stitch, I'd like you to write the story of my life. <clears throat> well, uh, I don't know what to say. Say yes, I'll make it worth your while. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Curtis, uh, I assure you, I, I, I am honoured, uh, but, um, <laughs> how can I put this? You, you see, it's not the money. Well, you're bound to say that, but let's face it. A chap like you, serious novelist, knocks out one book every two or three years. Hardback advance, 5K. Recoupable, of course. And maybe you win a prize, say another 10. Paperback sales, limited, I imagine. And film rights, hardly your scene. So what does it amount to over two or three years? Twenty grand, perhaps. It's not the money. Of course not, it's because you're a novelist. Yes. And I'm a game show host. As you see it, I'm at the trashier end of popular culture. It's gaudy, it's lowbrow. I understand. Most showbiz biographies, Mr. Curtis. Are hack jobs. You read them, you forget them. Exactly. But the challenge is to be different. This will be an eternal monument to your genius and my achievements. You see, mine is a fascinating life. Born into poverty. Left school at 12. Merchant Navy. Last days of music hall. Pirate radio. Television pioneer. A household name. Not bad for a boy from nowhere. Is that the title? The title is... No Regrets. I see. You don't like it? Well, it's not that I don't like it. We can change it. The Boy From Nowhere. I like that. It's a good start. Mr. Curtis, I haven't agreed to do this yet. But you will, sir. I can tell. Everyone says it was the money. But it wasn't. Well... Not just that. Though obviously there was money involved. It was the challenge, like he said. The challenge to be different. You're 
join me at a crucial time, Jonathan. You will be present to document the crowning glory of my career. Really? Yeah. You see, the idea of an entertainer as someone who simply entertains is gone. The modern showman is also a businessman. If I have an idea for a television show, I own that idea. I can sell that idea. And to sell it to America, why, that is the holy grail. Lou Nordstein, Annie Konigsberg, Anna Spelling, Mikey Charles, Lisa Mulroy. Our president of acquisitions, Ed Nebreski, will be joining us from New York. Hey, JJ. Hello. Ed Nebreski here. Listen, JJ, I've always been a big fan of yours. Thank you. So for me, it's a great honor just to reach out and shake your hand. Okay, let's get down to business. JJ, we've been running test previews around the country, sampling different demographics, different ethnic and cultural groups, and it looks like this. Amongst our target group, mid-aged, suburban, high-frequency mall users with a low discriminant index, we're talking here about slower people. I see. Anyway, JJ, those dumb fucks, they love your show. So let's make a deal, shall we? Uh, we have to run more previews. More previews? How many bloody previews do you need? Easy now, JJ. We're looking at spending a lot of money here. We're considering several different options. But at the moment, JJ, you're the man. Oh, JJ, you poor misguided man. He really thought it was as simple as that. But wasn't he forgetting that the Americans had a choice? And who else might they choose but his newest and most poisonous rival? Dave Turner. I'll take it. I don't care how much it costs. I don't need to know because me, I can afford it. Super brat. No one's fired until I say so. Superstar. <laughs> Idiot Child. A combination of Sid Vicious and Pee Wee Herman. Extremely popular. But then the torture of dumb animals always is. I hate the show. Uh, the show's cool, the show's cool. Yeah, he's got sex appeal, he's funny, he's young. Humorous and outrageous. Very, very full of himself. What is a nasty, vicious little show? I mean, it appeals to a generation desensitized by video games and uh, internet pornography. Oh, I must say that the one time I watched it, I did find myself strangely fascinated. Okay, you have won 5,000 pounds. Are you going to stop there or are you going to go for more? Oh, no, please. No, no. Turner poses a question. What would you do for money? Or rather, is there anything you won't do for money? So what appears to be totally barbaric is, in fact, a remarkably subtle examination of human nature. Ten thousand pounds, Stanley. I'm sorry, Sylvia. We need the money. I work with them all, of course, with Des, Les, Archie, Dickie, Eric, Benny, Brucey, Bob, Bob, Bob and Bobby, even that little schmuck, Monty Franklin. Who? Nobody. Yeah, they were all happy enough to hitch a ride. Where are they now? Nowhere. Whereas I, I am on top of the world. Well, the young pretender. <laughs> ah, JJ. Still breathing, I see. Jonathan, do you know Dave? He's one of the new breed. Genetically modified horse shit. <laughs> <laughs> JJ, you kill me. Really, you do. But seriously, this, um, this ratings business, to see you crumbling away in front of us every week, it's painful. Ah. Oh. If, if there's anything I can do to help, I mean, do you want to come on the show? 
Your show? Yeah, last refuge of a confused and pathetic. <laughs> well, you feel right at home then, wouldn't you? You're nothing, David. I wipe you off my shoe. Of course you do. Mm. But I have something bigger to think about. I have America, JJ. I have the US of A. America? <laughs> now listen to me, you fucking cokehead degenerate. If they buy one show, it's gonna be mine, not yours, understand? Turner and JJ were rivals, but it hadn't always been that way. Five years ago, JJ gave Dave his first break, uh, as they say, the Royal Variety Command performance. Your Majesty! Your Royal Highness! My Lords, ladies and gentlemen, may I present to you a young man? He's a comedian. A singer, a grand entertainer in the old style, and I'm sure you'll be seeing a great deal more of him in the years to come. Will you please welcome Mr. Dave Turner? I'll never forget the first time I met Dave Turner. He was edgy, exciting, aggressive. He was looking for a personal assistant, and I got the job. I was thrilled. It felt like, yeah, this is showbiz. Millions of dollars, Karen. Tens of millions of dollars. Hundreds of millions of dollars. Of course, what he really wanted was a guardian, a chaperone, a pimp, dealer, nursemaid. Shit, look at me. Look at my skin. I can't meet them looking like this. I look like shit, like I'm down, like a loser. And some of the work was distinctly... I need something, Karen. Unsavory. JJ? Are you there? Look, it's Dr. Colworth here. I haven't heard from you. I've been trying to get in touch, but, um... Look, I don't think you're facing up to this condition of yours. There's no question about the diagnosis, so you and I need to discuss your treatment, hmm? If you don't want to come here, I can quite easily pop round to your place, okay? So, um, give me a call, hmm, JJ? Come here! 15 minutes, JJ. Are they here yet? Who? The Americans. Um, not yet. They're going to buy my show, Mike. Yes, JJ. Can you imagine what that means to me? Yes, JJ. Make sure they have everything they want. tonight as much as I have, and I want to leave you with this thought. While others may think they know us, they're only guessing at the person inside, and however well we know ourselves, we can always be surprised. Good night and God bless. What are you doing? That food is for the Americans. Well, they didn't turn up. Didn't turn up? What do you mean they didn't turn up? They were coming here tonight. They're going to buy my show. No, they're not here. I can fucking see that. Why didn't someone tell me? Will you stop eating the fucking food? Hey, guys, everything OK? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Dave, I want you to know we're having a great time. Needless to say, J.J. was very angry about the American business in that self-righteous way that only showbiz people ever are. So, what you are about to witness, Jonathan, is a demonstration of the power of personal influence. All I'm asking, Timothy, is that you prevent him from making this deal with the Americans. It's his show, J.J. 
He can sell it to whoever he likes. We just broadcast. Then tell him, if he persists with this deal, you'll take his show off the air. Even if I wanted to, JJ, do you seriously suppose that I can take a show off the air? It's your channel, isn't it? You are the controller, aren't you? Yes, I'm the controller. But we have shareholders, JJ. Advertisers. I come to you, Timothy, because your father and I, we were like that. He came to this country with nothing, not even shoes on his feet. I think you're exaggerating. This is before he was Ted Wilson, when he was playing Isaac Jakobowitz before the Goyim made him one of them. One of them? And since when have you been one of us, JJ? Timothy, I've always been a good friend of Zion. JJ. Okay. All right. I get it. It's like that, is it? Well, if this is what it takes to get him off the air, we'll do it. Now, come on, Stitch. Use my knife. Chop it off. Uh, JJ, I'm not... This won't take a minute, Timothy. JJ, please. Come on, Stitch. Chop. Cut. Chop. Cut. 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 Chop. Can you call Cut. the security, please? Chop. JJ? Mr. Curtis? JJ, there's nothing wrong with your show, but you know how it is. It's business. Turner. Dave Bloody Turner. You're going to buy his show. Relax, JJ. We're not at the stage of buying anyone's show. We just want to cool it down a little. But if you stay in touch with us and we stay in touch with you, and <laughs> I'm sure we'll all stay in touch. Pete, you like to show Mr. Curtis out? I will not be beaten by Dave Turner. No, it will not happen. That little shit will regret the day he started this. Really? Oh, yes, he will. I shall use his own methods. I shall use deceit, bribery, and sly attacks. I have a plan, Jonathan. Clear-eyed, bold, Bloody hell. What's wrong? This man is a stalker. Mr. Curtis, excuse me. Certainly! If he tries anything, don't hesitate. Will you stop harassing me? Mr. Curtis, I know it's sometimes difficult to accept a diagnosis. Don't you have patience, you see? You are one of my patients, Mr. There's Curtis. nothing wrong with you me. You must have treatment. Out of my way. Please. Mr. Six. Oh, JJ. JJ, there's no need Please, to Please, help. Help, 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 I didn't mean to, um, you know, I just meant to, uh, oh, thank God, uh, he's still breathing, uh, right, I I'll call an ambulance. No, I'll do it. No need for you to be involved, you run off. I'll tell them he was mugged. Go on! Now do you begin to understand, Doctor? My health is unquestionable. There is no disease. There never has been a disease. Only the sickness of your own imagination. What can I say? It's appalling. I'm not a man of violence. I didn't want to hurt anyone. Yes, I hit him, but... This man is a stalker. I was tricked. And didn't JJ hit him too? He must have. 
But yes, it's true. I hit him first. for libel. I want to bring this paper to its fucking knees. Yeah, well, I don't think you can, Dave. You see, the article's very carefully written. You're not accused of anything. All it says is that someone you once worked with was recently convicted of indecency. It's got nothing to do with you, but that doesn't matter. You're smeared by association, not libeled. So what are you trying to say? The truth, Dave. I was discovering that Dave's problem, or one of his many problems, was in dealing with the real world. He assumed, as celebrities do, that because he was on television, everybody loved him. Shareholders, advertisers, the League of Decency, the Association of Christian Viewers. We've had hate mail, letter bombs, death threats, boycotts, blackouts. My son was beaten up at school. The Union of Hair and Makeup Artists expresses its strongest possible condemnation of your behavior. But I haven't done anything. And you think that matters? Master Stitch, have you heard the news? The Americans have suspended their negotiations with Turner. Apparently they were concerned that his show might contain some coded message promoting unsavory sexual practices. Mr. Curtis. Amazing, really, what a man can achieve with one bent journalist and an envelope stuffed full of five-pound notes. Money well spent, I say. I resign. Beg pardon? Mr. Curtis, I resign. I no longer wish to write about your life and works. But you've barely begun. I've seen enough. Oh, no. No, no, no. That would be so ungrateful, Jonathan, at the time when I remained silent on your behalf. What do you mean? You nearly killed him. Thanks to you, a highly respected Harley Street physician is in a coma in intensive care. A physician? You said he was stalking you. So he was, in his own way. I'm just looking at it from the prosecution point of view. Prosecution? I'll be all right. A genial Uncle JJ, the housewife's choice for you. Oh, dear. The British don't like intellectuals, Jonathan. Still less do they like them in a cold Victorian jail. You bastard. And you will finish the book, Jonathan, and the copyright, incidentally, will be mine. Sustainable, physically, emotionally. You think it's just great, just fantastic. Girls, drugs, whatever you want. Then you wake up and you realize you've got to find a way back. And how did you find a way back? I think it was my mother's support that saved my life. Very, very close. I visit her as often as I can. And what of your father? What do you remember about him? 
I was three years old. It was a terrible loss. Also an inspiration to me. He went out there to save lives. And he did. But he never came back. Lost at sea. Swept overboard. What I remember most is the last thing he ever said to me. I'm just going out to rescue some children. I'll be back later. I'll never forget that. It was my idea. Confess, I said. Talk about your childhood. Shed some tears. They'll love you, Dave. But that stuff about his mum. What a load of... And one other thing, your mother... Fat bitch! What's you on now? Anyway, it worked. To be honest... They should just leave him alone. Enough's enough. He's suffered enough, really. Full stop, you know, no more. I don't think it's in the public interest because it's so personal. Unfortunately, Dave's renewed popularity only gave him more confidence in his crusade against that godfather of family entertainment. Fucking brilliant, Karen. Who'd have thought all it took was a little slice of humble pie to get those bastards off my back? It's called rebuilding, winning back the public's acceptance, that's all. Yeah, whatever. And now, the gloves come off. This is where it starts. And now, please welcome this week's special guest. Hey, it's not my dancer! Eleven point one million versus ten point nine. That is two hundred thousand human beings prefer me to him. Of course, the ratings tell us what they tell us, which is nothing. With my viewers, I have a relationship that transcends mere numbers. We'll be back next week. Good night and God bless. At the end of the day, it's bums on sofas, and I'm winning. Five years ago, I put that young man on television. Look, this is how we found. Give me six weeks to be retired. Good night and God bless. Where was I? 1973. Oh, yes, 1973. A momentous year. And why was that, JJ? Because of the coup d'etat in Chile? Hmm? Invasion of Israel and Yom Kippur? Or are you thinking of the ceasefire in Vietnam? What? Oh, yes, of course. But back in the real world, Mr. Stitch at the Palladium Theatre in Cleethorpes, February 17th, 1973, the young J.J. Curtis unveils his new variety act. It was, write this down, a triumphant performance, a dazzling montage of song, dance and comedy for all the family. Naturally, I top the bill. My name in lights, J.J. Curtis. I can see it now. So who was below you? On this historic bill, who supported you? I don't recall. Some nobody, some loser. Hmm. Might be interesting to find out. No, it would not. This is my life, my book, my monument. There's no need for anybody else. Well? I'm not going to do it, Dave. I'm not. But you will. You know you will. You'll do it for me, Karen. Memo to Jonathan Stitch. I hope the book is going well. I've been thinking about some early childhood memories that you may wish to incorporate. Ahem. I am three or four years old, walking through the dappled sunlight of a forest. 
Nothing but a child, but already conscious of my destiny. To play to the crowd. To rejoice in their love. It is written. I shall be a performer. Some time, Father. How long? 37 years. And today you are returning to God? Yes, Father. Has anything in particular drawn you back to him? No, no. No, nothing in particular. Just that recently I've had time to think about things. Yes. And faith, the importance of faith, and God, of course, and what happens when, if, we, when, the Lord is our salvation, our only salvation. Only through him shall we live for eternity. Exactly. When, if the inevitable were to happen... You wish to confess? Yes. I have several items, sins, to confess. It's been a long time. God hears your distress, and he knows you have returned to his house. Your salvation has begun. There is no need to hear everything today. Return tomorrow, and I shall hear your confession. Thank you, Father. Father? Thirty-seven years, and he thinks I'm going to listen to the whole shebang. Ha! I said, come back tomorrow, my son. While Dave and JJ fought their little war, I wanted to know why JJ had lied to me about who really topped the bill in 1973. Some loser? Some nobody? Or was it Monty Franklin? Several years ago, I performed at a benefit concert for an orphanage to raise money to take the children on holiday. I claimed expenses. I see. But I lied. I doubled the expenses and demanded payment in cash. I see. I spent the money, the orphan's money, on a prostitute. I see. And she gave me a dose of venereal disease. Right. J.J. Curtis, local boy made good. Lying bastard. You can read the clippings. He's never done bugger all for this place. Hasn't even been here since 1973. You see, my whole career is built upon theft and betrayal. Monty Franklin was the real star. Until the accident, that is. Accident? Yeah, the accident. The one that left old Monty Franklin in a wheelchair. I only became a star because another man lay crippled and broken. One night at the Palladium Theatre, halfway through the show, Monty and JJ are missing. Nowhere to be seen. Where are they? Is that them up on the lighting gantry? When suddenly, Monty comes crashing down, falls 40 feet from the gantry to the stage. And you think it wasn't an accident? J.J. Curtis wanted top billing. He wanted to be the star. And after that, he was. Now, if I could prove that J.J. had tried to murder Monty, well, with a scoop like that, I could destroy Curtis. Or at least his public image. And wasn't that the same thing? Excuse me, excuse me. Uh, I'm, I'm terribly sorry. Uh, it's Linda, isn't it? Hi, I'm Jonathan Stitch. You may have heard of me. I'm a novelist. No, I'm afraid not. I was wondering if I could talk to you and to your father. What about? I'm writing a book about J.J. Curtis. 
My father lost the power of speech, and even if he hadn't, J.J. Curtis is the last person he would wish to discuss. Well, I just wanted a different viewpoint of J.J.'s early career. I was particularly interested in the events of 1973. The past is buried, Mr. Stitch. What can possibly be gained by disturbing it? Well, I really think people may be interested. Thanks. What a tremendous performance! Our winners of the week are once again the Arkwright family from Barnsley, who will now go through to the final for a chance to win the big prize. The holiday of a lifetime for a lifetime. So, come back next week. More action, more laughs. More of everything! <laughs>
looked like this when I was your age. I've not got many autographs. No, not yet. But you have to start somewhere, eh? It's Charlie, isn't it? Hold on. What's this? 10p. <laughs> Hang on, let's see what else there is. 50. There. Oh, here we go, lad. Thanks, JJ. No. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you. Mum. Hello. Yes. Yes. I know I haven't been to see you. Mo Mother, will you stop this emotional blackmail? Hey, Mum. Within 48 hours, I will be on your doorstep. I guarantee it. Ciao. Party time at the Tacky Mansion. They were all here to celebrate the humiliation of JJ. No, it wasn't somewhere I wanted to be, but I had a question for Dave Turner, the nation's favorite bad boy. I am the big bad wolf, and these are my little bow peeps. I captured them, lost in my maze, weren't you girls? Right. Um, pardon me, but, uh... If you're the big bad wolf, wouldn't it make more sense if they were Little Red Riding Hoods? You're right. You're right. Mm-hmm. Get out. Go on. Get out. All of you. This is what happens, Mr. Stitch. This is my problem. I grew up without a father, you see. I took on a lot of responsibility. I, I do too much. I don't delegate. Mistakes creep in. But you know, I could use someone like you. Uh, that's a really kind offer, but uh, at the moment I'm working for Mr. Curtis. Ah, yes. J.J. Curtis. I'm interested to know why you two hate each other so much. I hate him because he's a talentless old fart. Any other reason? Yeah. Actually, yeah. Because he shoved my grandfather off a gantry and left him in a wheelchair for the rest of his life. So Dave was Monty's grandson. No wonder he hated JJ. Have you got proof of that? Not such. No. But you want revenge? Of course I do. Then what? What happens? Are you friends or what? <laughs> what the fuck are you on, mate? I'm just wondering what happens after revenge. I mean, what does either of you actually get? Dave, what's it worth? Worth? I've never really thought about it like that. I mean, I... Well... Hold on. Who do you think you are, coming into my house, asking poncy fucking smart-ass questions? I'm just curious. Yeah. Well, you can take your curiosity, and you can bugger off. What do you want? I've come to stay. No, you bloody well haven't. JJ... I need to get to know you if I'm going to write this book. I need to know the private man as well as the public. Bugger off, Stitch. I've had enough of this. JJ, it's the literary monument to your life and achievements. So I wondered if maybe you could tell me a little bit about you and Monty Franklin. There's nothing to tell. You could start with his, uh, accident. That man is not an issue in my life. Must be strange for you, though. Just as you were present at the end of his career, 
Now, his grandson would appear to have finished yours. You think I'm finished, do you? No, it's not for me to say, is it? You'd have to admit, though, there is a, an appealing symmetry to the situation. If you say so. Yeah. Rather like a Greek tragedy. What a fascinating insight, Mr. Stitch. So, go on. Tell me. What did you do to Monty Frank, Clint? I know your sort, Stitch. Nothing you enjoy more than a good sneer. Look at the funny man. He entertains the pros. How common, how vulgar. Not like you. You're too clever to care about ordinary people, but inside it hurts, doesn't it? It really hurts that they don't care about you. They don't know your name and they never will. But me, I reach out to people. I touch them in a way that your kind never can. So call me trash, populist, mindless. I am not ashamed. I make a difference. Do you? And now, if you don't mind, I shall go to bed. Sleep well, Mr. Stitch. Brought you some chocolates, Granddad. So, everything all right, is it? Mum been in to see you, has she? I expect she has. Old Curtis, he had me on the ropes there for a while. But it's all sorted now. Yep. It's all gonna be all right. <laughs> Dave, you in there? It was Friday night. I escorted Dave, as usual. Birthday party, are you going? I need sex, Karen. Say. Dave. Karen. But the party was about to end. Okay, Billy, what are you going to give her? 5,000 millivolts for five seconds wins you 5,000 pounds. 10,000 for 10 wins you 10 grand. And 50,000 millivolts for 20 seconds wins you a mighty 50,000 pounds. Go on, love. Go on. Are you sure, love? It's up to you, Billy. You can leave it at 10 if you want. Let's go for it. 50. Have you heard? Heard what? There was an accident on current account. A man was killed. How tragic. How very, very tragic. Dave Turner was purged because he allowed a man to die on television. It was a brutal, degrading spectacle. But wasn't his real crime that in a moment of brilliance... Still, uh, there was one rather splendid close-up. He reveals... A young lady. ...the true savage nature... Very, uh, <laughs> ...of our bestial selves. Voluptuous. <laughs> Okay, 
Let's go for it. 50. Okay. Let's go for it. It's all right, love. He's just fainted. <laughs> now that is what I call shocking. We'll be and back we'll be after the after break. After the break. <laughs> oh no, you won't. It's all over, David. JJ. Stitch. You still here? Scribbling away, I hope. You were laughing. What? At that man dying. You were laughing. Was I? That accident. A terrible business. You. What? You didn't. Didn't what, Jonathan? It was an accident, wasn't it? Up to a point. I mean, I had no way of calculating the exact voltage. There's always an element of chance at these sort of things. You fucking lunatic! Murdering bastard! That makes two of us. What? Didn't you see? It was in the paper just the other day. I kept it for you. Eminent physician. Brutal assault several weeks ago. Never regained consciousness. Passed away. Tragic loss. Case still open. So you see, Jonathan, I have nothing to fear from you. And as for Turner finishing my career, I think you'll find it the other way around. David, what can we say? You're finished. The show is finished. The format is finished. We're going home. It's over. Mother. Mother, please, let me in. Mother, I'm sorry. I regret everything. Which part of Elvis Presley was removed in an operation in 1960? Was it A, his tonsils? B, his appendix? I'll join a lifeboat, I'll, re I'll rescue children, I'll go to church and pray, I'll do anything, please, just let me in and tell me I'm still me, I'm still your boy, I'm still the one you love. Or, C, an ingrowing toenail.
Okay, Monty. Let's talk. Oh. We'll do some group shots. Some of just the family and some of me with each of them. Nice, big, happy pictures, okay? Megan, Charlie, I can see JJ. Morning. Hi. Hi. Mr. and Mrs. Arkham family. Yeah. That's us. All day of a lifetime. Yeah, that's right. I'll get your luggage. Oh. Thanks. <laughs> Hello. Hey, JJ. How are you? Come on. Come Hi, on. JJ. Hi, JJ. Yeah, right. That's it. Buzz together a bit. Come on. Nice big swells, everyone. Come on, children. Say cheese. Yeah, do a smart. Have a lovely time. Tragedy struck today when a plane carrying the winners of the it's TV not game show exactly the big prize exploded in the middle of the start of a new adventure for this ordinary world in life. It was a fight to catastrophe. Mrs. Santa Curtis looked devastated, pale and shocked. survivors. know enough to go to the tabloids so let's have a chat shall we hmm? let's talk about the old days let's talk about monty franklin back in cleethorpes 1973 and let's talk about his daughter 14 year old pretty young linda no no okay then let's talk about the man who played support to your father none other than the young jj curtis hmm? he's bright smart sophisticated no surprise that she develops a schoolgirl crush on our mr jj so one thing leads to another and it's all a big secret because daddy doesn't know and then one night during the show monty slips backstage between curtain calls and what does he find you his little girl and mr jj curtis playing hide the salami oh he goes crazy hmm? what father wouldn't he chases him uh, out of the room up the ladder on, on, onto the gantry hmm? he's gonna kill him so uh, so so you chase after them and, and and you plead you struggle you push monty slips oh, and he falls skull cracks like an egg and uh your poor father, disabled. And J.J. Curtis? You saved his life and his career. Thanks to you, he's the star of the show. It transfers to London and he doesn't look back. Come on, Linda. Tell me about it. <laughs> look, you don't owe him your silence. He left you with nothing. No, not quite, Mr. Stitch. Oh, my God. Oh, my God.
Linda, Linda, please tell me. Does JJ know? <laughs> no. No one knows. This is it, JJ. Good night. And God bless. Stop! What the fuck do you want? It's your father. What? Your father. You're fucking talking about. Listen. Please. Listen, Dave. It's true. Dave, Dave, Dave. Please. Uh, I've been to see her. She told me everything. She, she, she's had enough. No more lying, no more pretending. She wants you to know. my father no 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 she made that up she invented it all for you there was no lifeboat no children no father who died it became real but it wasn't him <laughs> she was 14 years old she hid it from the world and from you then she tried to discourage you from the career you chose but she couldn't i guess it's in the blood dave All I've ever wanted is my dad. For him to come back. To see me. To rescue me. Instead of them. Everything I've ever achieved, everything I've got, everything I've ever done. Now you can. Dad. It is you, isn't it? 
now it's you. Dad. I was in trouble for a moment there. You've... You, you've, you've killed your son. Little bastard, if I'd known, I would have taken care of it 27 years ago. But... It's not as if I wouldn't have paid for it. Stupid top. Anyway, I think we can call... We can call this a victory. <laughs> What? I'm dying, Stitch. Right, right, I'm, okay. I'm dying. What shall I do? Ah, uh, oh, my final words. Take down my final words. Uh, oh. Ready? Yeah, I'm ready. you, isn't it? Oh. Oh, God. <laughs> I've killed my son. I've killed He's a comedian, a singer, a grand entertainer in the old style, and I'm sure you'll be seeing a great deal more of him in the years to come. Will you please welcome Mr. Dave Turner? Funny, comical, everything. He's got character. Natural. Oh, a very talented man. Oh, terrific showman. <laughs> yes, yes. Excellent. And I've met him as well, in person. Very unpretentious. He's lively. Makes you feel like you're in the party. <laughs> Break up with all sorts of people from all walks of life. He's brought a lot of pleasure to a lot of people. Oh, yes, I'm glad he's come back. 
Yes, I enjoy his programmes. Just his personality, the way he is, um, and he, I think he's a great entertainer all round. It's the way he, uh, he puts himself across to the public. He's very natural um, in front of the camera. He like knows exactly what to say. He's very funny. He shows up very well against the more younger ones, doesn't he? He's just a brilliant entertainer. Yeah, classic. Oh, great. Oh, yes. God, I thought he was, almost thought he was dead. Yes, great. Yes, yes, he's, he was terrific. I never watched him. I have better things to do. I read a book. It's put to us that these people are important, but when we look into it, we find they're just television celebrities. They bring a certain amount of pleasure at the moment, but their life's work will be forgotten.